Hello friends, Elliot Greenwood here and welcome. Welcome to the extension of how to draw using Pisco Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you specifically how to save, export and import your files into the Pixel app using the browser version and the actual app that you can download from the page. I'm making this video because I had a few comments asking questions about like why the files can't be opened and all that stuff. The answer is very simple, you just cannot. Of course, obviously the first time users of this software will get confused with the saving system. So now I'm just going to explain every single step that you need to understand and all the tips and tricks within. So let's just begin. So once you created your project, anything like that, and you just sketched out anything. So the first thing in the browser version, all you have to do is just click this button over here on the right side, click save, name your project, anything like that, you just call it games. And if you're going to press enter, you will get this saved icon. Now in browser version, it doesn't do anything except changes the name of your project and it creates temporarily save file right in your browser. If you click while here enter, it counts as this button which just saves project in the browser. And to access it, all you have to do is just go to import button right here and click browse local saves. And you will get this UI where you saved progresses. I wouldn't recommend saving like this because once you close your browser, all these saves will disappear and that's what you do not want to experience. No one does. So the way to save this, you have to click save button and then click save as .pixel file. Once you click that, you will get a pop-up here on the browser. Once you get this file here, create your folder or something like that and just drag that file right in this folder. And that's the way you're going to save your project. You won't gonna see icons like this because I tested something and I'll explain you this later on, but usually you will see this file as a piece of paper file. Obviously you cannot open it and you won't be able to open it because of the way this software, this tool saves all these projects. The only way for you to open it, so I'm just going to close this one, create new sprite, you just go back to the folder you saved your file and just drag that file right in the canvas like this. Just drag it in, release the mouse button, you will get this pop-up, click OK. This is just to prevent you from overwrite things and lose your progress. So once you're happy with all the imports, just click OK and you will get your project back in here. Now, of course, if you have something else, for example, let's just pick my recent work, just anything, just a different file, drag it in, you will get this pop-up and you will basically replace this work like that. Or if you're not happy with dragging files, which in my opinion is probably the most fastest way, click here, import, browse Pisco files and you will get folder open or just find the, the folder where you save this project and just select anything you want and you will and you will get this pop-up. Now sometimes this happens when the software thinks that you want to combine things so what you can do is just combine them and if you will combine you will get another option basically where you want to put it and stuff like that in what size and then just select if you want to save it on the same frame or in the new frame. This thing is useful for animations if you want to combine sprite sheets or tiles. But normally what you would like to do is just, just import single image and just replace it like this. Interesting thing about Piscolab is that you can import images as well. And of course you will have images that have quite a big size and if you want to scale things down and keep the same value and the same pixels, if you're going to resize them to original size if you export it in a bit scaled up image, you want to untick the smooth resize off to save the same colors just like that because if you're going to keep the smooth resize on and scale it down it will lose the quality and sharp tones that you used click combine and just create a new frame just to demonstrate you as well so as you can see it will create a new layer as well and new animation 
frame. And as you can see, just to compare both of them, let me just merge these layers together. As you can see, this is the non-smooth scale, and this is the smooth one. So as you can see, some of the pixels will just lose its values and the image will become messed up. Now, when it comes to exporting files, GIFs, PNGs, and other things, you don't even really need to use these ones. You mainly you will be using either GIFs to share your work, animated characters or animated objects in pixel art, or just PNG. So the scaling will increase the size of this object, basically showing like what the re resolution of the image will be, depending on what you want to choose. So normally when it's exporting stuff for games, you should keep it on one, but if you want to share some work with someone, of your friends just keep it on 10 or below 1000 pixels so when it comes to exporting to sprite sheets pretty much you just want to keep one column i usually just keep one column so i could have like one straight line of images and just pretty much just click download and you will get a png file that you can use wherever you like same goes for gif with such a high detail work you will get this error message limit that this tool can have which is quite unfortunate but basically it will create a white background behind the character if it has like a lot of colors the gif basically won't gonna have a transparent background if it, if it has this message that's just what it is it's not a big issue but if you want to have something like that animated in a gif with no background it's not gonna work with this tool that well when exporting pngs there is no issues with pngs and the same thing goes for the actual pixel tool that you can download as an app and you will get pretty much the same result now saving in here is a little bit different so if I'm going to create something and just click save, it will ask you where you want to save it. Basically go into the Pisco folder and create new folder and just call it my projects. And just you can save all your stuff in here. Just call it test, whatever. Save it and that's it. You can work and just click control, control S and you will automatically save your stuff. So you won't lose any progress. It's far safer to work with the downloaded tool rather than on browser. Saving, exporting mechanics are the same pretty much. Just as I said again, take a file, put it in. Are you sure you want to do this? And that's it. It's just a little bit different, but overall it works just the same way. You can just play around and see how it works for yourself. But the main question that many people kept asking, why can't you open these files? Well, the reason is that these files are not executables. Uh, they are just codes. And what I mean by that, if you go to Pixel App and just go to the top, let's just call our top three pixels right here. And I'm going to copy these. I select these pixels, control C, and when I'm going to open a notepad and control V, you will get this code. This is a code. So all these files are holding codes. That's why there is no executable, and that's why you cannot open anything. As you can see, I'm just clicking, double clicking, and it's just not opening anything. Even though it looks like it could open, but that's just because I'm going to tell you soon why. As you can see, all it does is just saves the code. Interestingly enough, if you're smart with these things, I selected all this code and copied it, and create new file, and just control V. And as you can see, it just paints those pixels like that. If you just look at the one pixel code line, it basically sells first pixel, which is zero, zero coordinate. So it's basically top left corner and just saying color what and what's the color code. And that's just how the saving works if you're into mechanical areas. And now let's just talk about these files in depth. Usually once you download these files, you will get just a blank file. Now, if you want to have this icon like I have to make things easier to see, before this video, I actually tested if it can be opened, linking the file into the executable of the Pisco and and clearly it does not as you can see i'm just opening and nothing happens now if you want to have this kind of thing as well all you have to do is just open it just open it directly or just open with by right clicking on the file and you will get this now since i've already linked the software i have this icon 
but you can link pretty much anything else and you will get this icon as well. But if you want to link it, all you have to just click more apps, go down all the way down and just look for another app on this PC. Then just find where you saved your Piscal tool and try to open with it and all your files will basically change the icons and I think it's much better to have like this because it's easier to see which ones are the files and which ones are the just images. And as I said again, the main question why can't these be open is because they are not executables. They are just not programmed to act like executables, unfortunately. So all you have to do is just take the file drag it in the canvas and just open it and you will get your work back. You will get used to it, it's easy, it's quick, doesn't require too much time to save and find the location. All you have to do is just click save, export as pixel and just drag it into the folder. That's it, done. I hope you find this tutorial useful, especially for the beginners because I know it's quite confusing the way it saves the files. It's not like Photoshop or Blender. I would say it's far better to have this way of saving because these files do not take much space. They take much less space with this saving method, which I appreciate because it takes seconds to download these files and just move them around. They take no space just a few kilobytes well depending on your work size but other than that i think it's one of the fastest and good ways to save things but as i said you cannot open them directly all you have to do is just take the file drag it in the canvas and just open it and that's it that's all you have to do and yeah that's pretty much it so thanks for watching, I hope I helped you in some form or way because I know that there will be some people asking questions which is fine, obviously, people want to learn and I, I'm glad to help, I'm happy to help you and this video is for you. For those who don't understand how this saving mechanic works, how to export, import and stuff like that and I hope I helped to clear your minds on how this tool operates. Uh, make sure to check out my other content on my YouTube channel and if you have any more questions feel free to ask me and I'll make sure to either respond to you or make a video about specific things. Just ask questions, don't be scared, I'm happy to help. Thanks for watching again and I'll see you next time.